this is Greg Zelfin from SharePoint Maven and today I would like to show you how to share files and folders externally in SharePoint and OneDrive. Um, so let me just first start by saying that external sharing has been a huge pain for many many years uh, in SharePoint and OneDrive. Uh, however, uh, about a year ago or so, uh, Microsoft has really improved uh, the, the uh, sharing experience for uh, end users and the process is much uh, much easier now much more streamlined um, you know for for both you know the individual who is sharing as well as for the recipient um, now in this particular vid video I'm going to uh, only show you how to share uh, files and folders you can also share sites in SharePoint however uh, that experience um, you know, is, is still, you know, is, is kind of a little bit different. It really depends, you know, what kind of site you're sharing, whether you're sharing a, a regular SharePoint site or an Office 365 group site. So uh, I'm probably another, you know, another, you know, uh, topic for another day, another video. But today we're only going to focus on, you know, files and folders, how to share files and folders, um, you know, externally from within SharePoint and OneDrive. I want to be clear that um, um, you know, uh, whatever I'm going to show you, I'm going to show it to you in a SharePoint environment. And, uh, you know, the same, the same mechanism, exact same steps and everything applies to OneDrive. So, um, the, the steps are, and the experience are identical. Now, once again, in the past, like I mentioned before, the experience has been, uh, quite poor for the, you know, f f f f f mostly for the recipient, um, just to remind everyone, um, in the past, uh, if I, for example, shared something externally, and by external, you know, user, I mean user who is not part of your Office 365, who essentially is not your employee, right? Somebody's Gmail account or something like that. If I were to share something externally with you, you know, let's say a file or a folder, um, you know, the recipient had to, to pretty much, um, you know, go through several steps, you know, creating a Microsoft ID, uh, or using a, an existing Hotmail or Outlook account, and it was just a bit, you know, cumbersome for the recipients, for the end users. Uh, like I said, Microsoft really has has done an amazing job. Uh, the experience is much more streamlined. Uh, and uh, let me actually, uh, instead of uh, talking, just show the the whole experience, um, you know, for you. So what I have here, um, what I have here is a as a sales department site, and I have a document library residing on the site. Uh, and I created a folder, it's just a folder name that I created, you know, called client share. It could be really any folder. Um, by the way, file and folder sharing, um, external sharing works the same way. I'm going to show you both. I'm going to start with folder first. So let's say I want to share the uh, this particular folder uh, externally. Um, and, you know, let's just first check out what this folder has. This folder has another subfolder plus a few files underneath. So let's go ahead and share this folder externally and the process for the for you is the same um, as if you're doing internal sharing it's really um, it's really you know pretty much identical so uh, you you just do right click click share uh, now by default usually usually it really depends how your IT team has set it up but usually uh, by default your uh, you know the type of link that you will get here is is only meant for uh, internal, you know, employees, right? So because we're in inviting external users, users who are not part of our domain, users who are not part of our organization, uh, we need to specify specific people over here, you see? So specific people means, you know, we, we are specifying so, you know, pretty much external users or, you know, users with, um, um, you know, specific email addresses. Now, while we're on the screen, uh, you can also uh, check on check this box once again usually a default setting uh, you know the checkbox is checked but essentially this is where we can specify whether the external you know, rec recipient will be able to uh, make any changes uh, um, in this case to the folder so if I leave the checkbox on just like it is uh, that means that the user the recipient will be able to pretty much do whatever they you know he or she wants to do in that folder the, you know they will be able to add edit and even delete stuff in that folder 
All right. Uh, if I want to prevent that, maybe you know what I you know I'm sharing a bunch of drawings and and or PDF documents or Word documents. I just want them to to read only. Then I will need to uncheck the box. So you, uh, as an end user, are in total control of uh, of that experience. Uh, let's just leave it on just to kind of see what it you know what it will look like. So once again, I will allow the recipient to um, to modify and edit and add and delete documents. So. Uh, I'm going to hit apply. Now this is where we specify the um, the um, you know the recipient's email address. Um, so I'm going to type it in, and obviously it could be um, you know any email address. Uh, in my case, I'm using a test Gmail account, uh, but uh, in in your case, right, it could be your vendor, your client, whatever the email address is. So here we go. Now, as soon as I did this, as you can see, it's, it recognized that this recipient uh, is outside of our, our domain, our organization, just kind of gives you a warning message just so that you know, and then you can include a personal message over here and hit send. So the experience for you is pretty much the same as if you are sharing this folder or file internally or with a colleague, all right? Except the only difference is you, you choose a different link and you specify uh, the user's uh, uh, you know email address. Hit send. All right, your part is done. All right, your part is done. You just shared it. Now let's see what will happen to the recipient. So uh, I'm going to go to another browser. I am logged in as John here, and this is John's Gmail account. Look at this. Uh, John receives an email. And, um, you know, essentially that looks like this. Now, you know, essentially it just tells me, it tells John that Greg is, you know, sharing this folder with, with you. And essentially John just follows the prompts. Click open. Now, what happens next is this is kind of part of, you know, verification mechanism. Uh, the good news is uh, the recipient no longer needs to uh, create Microsoft IDs or log in with Outlook or Hotmail accounts or anything like that. Uh, but the recipient does need to validate, um, you know, the email address. Essentially just a way, you know, to make sure, right, that John was indeed the intended recipient and this was not a mistake, all right? So um, John types, um, you know, his email address. And what happens next is a Microsoft will send John an eight digit code, all right, to that email address, to the same email address. Um, now that eight digit code, I mean, right, it's, it's, um, it's pretty much, if you, if you, sometimes if you use Google and, uh, and um, you know, work with, you know, some banks, uh, they, they text you this uh, six or eight digit uh, codes that, you know, just to kind of validate your identity, same thing, all right? Essentially, Microsoft just wants to make sure that this is not spam, this is not robot, and just wants to make sure that this is the 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 human, uh, you, you know, actually accessing the documents. All right. So Microsoft sends this uh, eight-digit code right here. You just need to uh, uh, copy the code. Uh, well, the recipient, I guess, has to copy the code, paste it. Uh, click verify and by the way the recipient can also you know check this box so they don't need to do it every single time right uh, hit verify and now the user is in look at this the user has access now to that folder now if you notice right you know so the recipient does see the you know the the name of the site that sales site we were on but you know you know remember that document library let me show you over here you know, John, the recipient, only has access to what has been shared with him, all right? He doesn't have, he doesn't see anything else on the site, no other links, no notebooks, no other files and folders. He just has access to this folder, all right? And that's the contents of this client share folder. He cannot really navigate anywhere else in here, all right? And, you know, obviously now John can upload documents, right? Because we gave him edit privileges, remember? Uh, John can you know, uh, create a folder, all right? And it will register, the good thing is, anything that John does here will register under his email address. 
so you will be always be able to see you know who, you know if you have a vendor or client you know who maybe uploaded some documents you know uh, for you in a particular folder or made a change to a particular um, particular document you will always be able to see who did this in this case an external individual uh, let me just make another change to this document uh, so John is modifying um, this particular document as everything is auto saved because uh, John walks in um, office online here we go uh, let me see yeah it's supposed to uh, let me reload the page uh, it's supposed to show John's email address over here here we go. So John just modified the document. Now let's let me go to my original screen. If I uh, if I reload the same you know screen here, uh, actually yeah, I need to go to client share folder. Right? Look at this. I can see John you know pretty much creating this folder and John modifying the document. You see. So I, I always know what's going on um, you know in that particular folder. All right. Now. Um, so yeah, and obviously John can create folders. John can also delete. Remember, we gave John edit privileges, so John can also do this. Essentially, you know, pretty much delete, uh, and you know, and you know, pretty much, and and do everything that you can see here as far as the different commands. So, uh, you know, once again, that's what happens when you give edit privileges. Uh, edit means add, edit, delete. Uh, now, once again, this is pretty secure. So, I mean, if John you know, is familiar with SharePoint or, or maybe tries to cheat the system and tries to figure out the, you know, maybe go somewhere else in your environment, he will not be able to. So, for example, let me go, uh, you know, John figure, fig, you know, figured out that this is the address, right, of the site, uh, of the sales department site. So if John does this, look at this, it will tell him right away, sorry buddy, but you don't have any permission to access the resource. So John will only be able to access what you have, you know, you, you have shared with John. John will not be able to access anything else in your environment. So it's pretty secure. Now, uh, let me just, uh, you know, finish it off. I mean, let me just show you file sharing. We, we sh I shared the folder, right? Uh, let me just uh, share a particular, a particular um, uh, document. Uh, let me uh, come in here. Let's say I want to share this document, right? This is outside of the folder that I just shared. So right click, share. Once again, same exact uh, experience as if you are sharing a folder. Um, we have to select specific people. Uh, same checkbox, uh, right? So now just to try it out, uh, let me uncheck the box. So that means we will only grant a John read-only access to this particular document. Uh, and then we hit apply, and then once again we have to specify the uh, email address for John. All right, same uh, warning message, or not warning uh, message, just FYI, I guess. Um, John is outside of the organization, and then personal message. And hit send. So yeah, the experience for you is identical as if you're sharing a, a folder. Uh, nothing is different. Let's go to John's uh, Gmail account. Let's see. Here we go. Um, John gets an email saying that Greg wants to share this uh, document with you. Here we go. Same thing. Click open. Now, be because uh, you know, remember, you know, last time I had to enter all the codes and everything because I was already logged in as John. It didn't prompt me to validate my email address or, you know, or receive an eight-digit code. Um, obviously, if it w I was were to log in for the first time, uh, I would um, I would need to do that. But it didn't prompt me for that. But as you can see, here we go. I was just able to access the document and it goes directly to the document. Now, remember, uh, John cannot make any changes. You see. There is no edit button here or anything like that. Uh, John can only maybe download this document uh, to the desktop or something, but it's a read-only document because that's exactly what we uh, gave John, um, you know, the, the kind of access we gave John, all right? Um, so, so yeah, that's uh, what this, um, you know, essentially what, you know, the whole experience um, uh, as far as external sharing is concerned. Now, I do want to mention that obviously something I did not cover during this video 
uh, is you know some administrative settings, right? You obviously, in case if you're trying to share something externally and you get um, you know some error messages, uh, it doesn't allow you to share externally. That means that you have disabled external sharing um, on your SharePoint site collection or your tenant, and that's probably something that your IT team will need to uh, you know configure and uh, essentially just a simple setting uh, in the back end that will allow. Uh, enable or disable external sharing uh, for your particular site. Uh, so I did not cover this during this video uh, because I tried to focus exclusively on end user, you know, kind of experience. Uh, but this is a very important something that you know you you um, you know if you have admin privileges or your IT team will need to do uh, in order to obviously allow external sharing uh, within um, you know uh, within your organization. Uh, and once again, another thing, uh, I showed you, uh, you know, how to share files and folders externally uh, on a SharePoint site, but the same exact experience uh, applies to your own OneDrive account. So if you go to your OneDrive and you uh, click on a file or folder in there and you try to, you know, essentially it's the same look and feel, same, you know, you get the same, um, you, you, know, you know, same buttons, same choices uh, as on the SharePoint site. So that's pretty cool because that's obviously, uh, you know, pretty consistent from end user perspective. All right. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful and I uh, appreciate your time and attention. And uh, I hope to see you again in, uh, on my YouTube channel and my, on my blog, SharePointMaven.com. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.